is Shannon Cook with drywalldoc.com in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Today we are doing a wall where they had to remove the uh, mirror and had glue all over the walls, a big thick black glue. So what we do is take a, a scraper and scrape it all off, whatever comes off, and this is down to the brown paper right before you get to the gypsum. So you have the first layer and then you have the second layer of paper, which is brown. When you get down to that, you have to do something to it. We could just mud over it and hope it didn't bubble, but I have a product we put over it that reduces the bubbling by about 90%. So here is the calcimine recoder. With its oil-based primer, it dries flat, completely flat. So it gives something to mud to grip onto real good. Um, so we're gonna prime it real good and thick over these spots and we'll prime the whole area here because this, this was wallpaper back behind it. There was two layers of wallpaper. This is the brown, the, the back of the paper where it's glued on. So we're, we're just gonna leave that on and prime over it and see if it bubbles. If it does, we can cut a little place out and fix it. So we're just gonna prime it, let it dry and then we can do the mudding to float it out. But you really need to put something besides just mud over this because it's just gonna bubble and blister everywhere if you try to just mud over it. It just saves a lot of time priming it with something. Plus, we need to prime this because if we just put mud over this without priming it, it's definitely gonna bubble and try to lift. So we're just gonna prime up every spot that has the uh, paper on there. We're just gonna make sure to prime it real thick over the spots. Just gonna get it in all the brown. Brown, the paper's trying to pull because it's just so fuzzed up. That's why we wanna do it thick because whenever it dries, we can come with a knife and just barely scrape it and knock the little tops off of it and then mud it real easy. So I always prime the spots first because I'm gonna leave most of the paint on those spots. And even if it looks bad right now, you'll see trash all in this stuff. Once we scrape it before we paint, it'll knock all that stuff off with a good sharp knife. Then we can just mud it and all that trash won't be there. Also do it fairly thick over this brown paper because it will definitely bubble and blister. It's a very thin layer of paper. I'm let you pick which one. Who was it? No, eight six six. No more keep coming on me. Uh -oh. Made by Benjamin Moore. All right, now we've got it all primed. We're gonna let it set and completely dry. Then we'll show you the scraping process and the mudding process and see if it bubbles and show you how to deal with that. All right, now we've got it primed and it's dry. So you can see all the trash on the wall and stuff like that. You can rub it, get some of it off, but we just take a knife and scrape over it. Not any of the, what we call tits in the industry. I say the high places down. So that way when you mud over it, they don't come off in your mud like that right there before it was scraped, you can see what it does. It's hot mud, so it's no big deal. You can wipe it back down, but it's just a small area. So we literally just go in the whole wall and it'll knock all kinds of trash and stuff off. And you can see what all comes off of it. So you can picture if you just went to mud and over this, you'd have trash all in the mud and it's really aggravating.
And if you do have, so I'll just dig this up and show you. If you do have a place that's coming loose, you can go ahead and do this. Either you can reprime it or you can just start mudding it. And then the good thing about hot mud is if it starts bubbling as it's drying, right before it gets dry, you can kind of wipe it down and the bubble most of the time will disappear. Regular mud, the vinyl mud, you can't do that. It just stays wet too long. But hot mud will dry no matter what, the conditions. So that's why we use it to fix really bad stuff because it won't set. Like regular mud, if we piled it on here, the regular vinyl mud that takes a long time to dry would take probably eight or 10 hours to dry. And in that time, it would lift places that regular 20 minute mud that dries in 20 minutes will go ahead and harden before they have a chance to lift too much. You may have a few of them, but then you just scrape that and put another coat on it and just keep putting coats on until it's done. You have to do it this way. There's no other way to fix these walls. Now I have seen people come in and cut out the whole wall and put new drywall in because they don't know how to fix this. That's, can you imagine what it's gonna to take to cut all this out and hang a new wall back just to keep from having to fix that? It's unnecessary. All right, now I wanted to show you the hot mud I'm talking about. We're gonna use five minute to fill those spots in. You can get this pretty much anywhere. This is a Ruco. You can find USG at Home Depot. Lowe's has a five minute version too. It's their version of hot mud. It works good too. Um, I use whatever we can find, uh, but I'm gonna show you how to mix it up real quick. I mix it up by hand in a pan, never try to mix it up in a bucket because it's only five minute mud. And I have people sometimes work with us and they'll try to mix a bucket of five minute mud up and by the time you get it beat up with a paddle, it's dry. So we're just gonna mix a pan at a time. But it goes a good ways anyway. We're gonna put like half a pan of powder. I always use like a car wash brush to put water in there because I know how much to add with it. Plus it holds a good bit of water. I always make sure I get a lot of water in the corners because that's where all the lumps stay and you just barely wash it back and forth. Some people put water in their pan first. I don't. It's just the way I like doing this. However it works for you is how you can do it. You see it thickening up. Now we'll add more, more water. Once you get all of it starting to get wet, then you can start the stirring process. It's still a little dry over here, so I'm going to add a little bit more, not much. See how it stays lumped up in that corner. Just basically kneading it. And I'm a needy person. Know what I mean, Vern? It's a little bit thick, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Not much. One thing about Ruco, it says it's five minutes, but it actually gives you like 10 minutes. 10 or 12 minutes. USG will dry in exactly five minutes. So you better be spitting and getting when you're stirring that stuff and using it. This is why I like Ruco, because it gives me a little more working time. All right, now we're gonna start the mudding process. We got the five minute mud. We're just gonna start putting it on. I go both ways with it, shoving in all the little loose places, I'm going to leave it thick because I want it to cover every bit of the low spot and if it's going to bubble, a lot of times, even if it's low, you can put enough mud on to where when it dries, you can wipe it out and the bubble will disappear instead of, instead of having to cut it back out. perfect we're just trying to uh, put one coat on and just get these bad places here. And plus it's 
flush it out when it starts to dry, I'll do a little thing I call slicking out. Where I will take the lines out of it as it's drying. Where it'll smooth it out. Make it way easier to finish finishing. Normally five minute mug would be set up already. But Luco gives you a little extra time for some reason, which I'm glad of. We all need more time. Trying to get these lines filled too. Where the wallpaper was at, so it matched up. So the idea on this is not to make it look good the first time. Just to put a good base on it so we have something to work with after that. First coat of five minute done, we're gonna go ahead and slick out the um, lines out of it and just make it a little more smooth than what it is while it's in the process of drying. enough off to be able to level it out some and fill in some of the low places and dips. Just makes it easier for us to put another coat over and not have to put several coats on. some of it, you just keep smearing it until you get some all out of there. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put another tight coat of hot mud, uh, the fast setting mud over this, over the whole section this time. Then we can put a, a tight coat of skim mud on it and then sand it and it should work out perfect. I'm going to do the whole area. We also have a fan here running because today it's raining out and for some reason exterior walls take way longer for the mud to set up on. You can see up here we're still wet and over here it's completely dry. So the outside walls being damp have made it where it doesn't dry very quick at all. So now it's got a notch in it. So now it's got notches in them. You can see it. Sometimes our tools get hit on something and I have a little notch in my knife and it puts a little line in it. There's no big deal. This is not the final coat. But I'll take a file and file it out before I get the final coat. It just won't look as pretty. So you got that line in it, that's fine. It'd be all right. Coffee, just take a look.
basically we just want a, 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 a whole coat over every bit of the wall. That way, if something's going to bubble or blister or anything, we can see it before we put our final coat of vinyl glue on. Once you use vinyl, you have to let it sit. Unless you want to take it all back off and redo it because it's not dry. But we're going to have a bubble in it. Back in the 80s and 90s, everybody had real big mirrors in the bathroom. Now everybody's going to two individual mirrors or one individual mirror. So, we have to take this off and make it look good. Alright, now we will skim that after this dries. This is 20 minute mud. Let it dry completely and then we'll put a skim coat over and be done. 